Um, so y'all want to get started? I just, I'm going to kick, I'm not going to say much. I just wanted to welcome everyone to our Groyler second event in our virtual reading series. Um, thank you all for joining us. We're really happy to be here and we're really happy to um, welcome back Kevin and our friends from Spoke. Um, so yeah, just a warm welcome on behalf of my mom and Elizabeth, and James and Celia and the Groyler crew. So thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks. Thanks, TD. Uh, thanks, Carol. Thanks, Elizabeth and everyone in the in the Groyler family. It's, it's great to uh, do a launch for yet another Spoke. Six of the seven issues that we've done at Spoke, uh, we had our first reading uh, at the Groyler and how great it is that uh, we're not letting COVID or a blizzard uh, get in the way of another one. So it's, uh, it's, just, it's, it's just terrific. Um, Karina Van Berkham and I are the two editors of Spoke and we're really happy to uh, launch Spoke 7 uh, today uh, here at the Grolier. And it's, it's, I think the folks at the Grolier are gonna find this one super special too. And unfortunately, the way it usually works is that uh, Karina and I, you know, we get this thing done at the very last minute. Literally the box of books showed up yesterday and I'd be in the girl ear with you folks with my bottle of wine in one hand, pouring you a glass and handing you your copy of the issue in the other one. I do have them all here, but I can't hand them to all the readers. So I'll be popping them in the mail. Um, but the girl ear will have them on offer come this weekend. And you can go to the, uh, to the Spoke webpage and, and order them now. Uh, for those of you who aren't contributors, maybe uh, Karina or I will, will pop it in the chat so you can order it online. So I'll see if you folks can see this picture. This is the cover of Spoke 7. It would be hard if I held it right in front of you, but can anyone guess who's on the cover? Dee, Dee can you feature him in the, can you make- um, Can you do a screen share? Can you, you know, I don't have, uh, actually, Karina, do you have the, the PDF? Do you have the host? I do, I can pull it up, hold on. Dee, Dee make Kevin in the middle. Of the Maybe. Jimmy, uh, talk amongst yourselves and I'll pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Karina's going to pull it up, um, pull up the PDF. Oh, hold um, it up again, Kevin. Hold on, you're going to get a, You're going to get an even better okay. view. You'll get a much better view. Okay, great. It's got to be funny. It's not very much, it's not a very uh, excellent uh, capture of the picture. It's not a very good, uh, but I think it looks pretty, oh, let me share this screen. Oh, host disabled attendee screen. Oh, screen. sorry. Hold on. Can you do it now? Let's see. Yeah, it looks like I can. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I recognize that person. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. So it's a little bit blurry, but it's I think it's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful picture of 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 Ifiani as a young man reading. Um, which honestly, and honestly, his pants, I'm jealous. Uh, <laughs> those are some nice creases. <laughs> Great. Glad, this is the cover. I'm glad we were able to get this on the cover. Well, good guess. Oh, it's marvelous. Good guess. Let's take that yeah. down. According to, uh, according to Carol, uh, that's Ifiani in 1966, giving a reading in Manhattan. And uh, we, we dedicate this issue to, to Ifiani. Uh, spoke spoke from from the very beginning has basically had the the same mission, which is to advance a global poetry that engages with or is from the world's places, cultures, and literary traditions, both past and present, to an American poetry that sees the English language and literary tradition as core, but only one of many roots and paths for poetry, and three a poetics that attempts to innovate language idiom sensibility and poetic form while maintaining a public presence. Our first issue uh, came in response to the Boston Marathon bombing. And since then we've featured poets from all over the world, but have also made sure that we pay homage to Boston's most important emerging, established and often underappreciated poets. We've done big features on Fanny Howe, Damon Krakowski, Robert Creeley, Audrey Mardovich, John Brooks Wheelwright, Amanda Cook, Bunny Lang, John Mulrooney, Sam Cornish, Garrett Lansing, Denise Levertoff, Larry Eigner, Ben Major, Chloe Garcia Roberts, and more. In the tradition of one of Boston's greatest magazines ever, Sid Corman's Origin, 
we give these poets in each issue a real space. Uh, Origen used to always have a good 30, 40 pages on one person or one person's long poem. So rather than just a little smattering like you get in most ma magazine, you re can really get a, get a, get a real feel uh, of a particular person. We also see ourselves in the tradition of the New Directions an Annual. And for those of you, uh, for those of us in that tradition, the 1979 New Directions 39, I don't know if anyone have this one on their bookshelf, but New Directions 39 was a special one for many of us because it was the first to pay tribute and somewhat revive the career of Louis Zukowski, uh, who was, uh, and they had a big feature on Zukowski uh, featuring his wife, Basil Bunting, George Oppen, and many others. But that issue also uh, is when most US and Western writers first learned of Ifiani Minketi. Uh, he edited a special section in ND 39 titled Poems and Poets from Africa, which introduced readers to many new African poets of the time, uh, including himself. Minketi had just finished a doctorate in philosophy under John Rawls here at Harvard. And it started to become a distinguished, have a distinguished career at Wellesley College. In 2006, he became the newest owner of the Girl Era Poetry Bookshop, the area's epicenter, as we all know, uh, for close to a century in terms of the area's poetry. Thanks to him, Spoke held all but the first of its openings at the Girl Era. His gifts and presence will be sorely missed since he was passed away in 2019. But his legacy lives on in this book and through the McKitty's family efforts to continue the tradition of the Grolier. We're honored to publish a, po a posthumous poem by him in this issue and to publish a transcript of an interview that Doug Holder, who I think is here uh, on the Zoom call today, did with him a few years ago. Uh, since with COVID-19, we're spending a lot more time at home and sometimes a lot more time alone, we thus have a very fat issue. Uh, our bunny laying issue a couple a couple ago was somewhere around 300 pages. This time we hit 331 and we're proud of it. Um, some of our in-depth features that we have this time, uh, we'll hear from some of them. We have translations from the Urdu. We have more of Amanda Cook's letters to Maximus, her responses to uh, the Maximus poems by Charles Olson, which we featured last time too. We have Philip Nikolaev's uh, translations of Pushkin. Um, and we have new Ukrainian poetry, which we'll talk about in a second, and uh, a whole wonderful uh, trove of poems by Christina Davis. We also have a number of, uh, of a section of, of poems. We have new translations by Nguyen Bok Chung and Martha Collins, poems by Daniel Tobin, Ariella Ruth, Gloria, who I see here, Paul Marion, uh, Charles Hartman, Rebecca Levy, Tyler Dunstan, D. Eric Parkinson, Michael Franco, Dale Martin Fr Smith, Naomi Juan, David Blair, who I think is here, Libby Goss, Madeline Gilmore, Ruth Lebson, who is here, uh, Jason Berry, and Peter Johnson. We also have some great criticism in this issue and, and essays. We have an article by David Blair on a reading by Stephen Dobbins and Robert Pinsky. We have an interesting F essay by uh, Paul Vogel um, on the selected poems of Harry Crosby, an essay by David Dale Martin Smith, and um, some an interesting selection of letters from the forthcoming selected letters of Russell Edson. Very excited to have those in here. Um, a conversation between Fanny Howe and Jim Dunn about Harry Crosby. Um, the interview with Ipiania that I, I noted, an essay by Jacob Hoowink. Um, and Nicholas Roberts reviewing the new Stephen Jonas book, and Raquel Lerner, um, who has the final chapter. We, we pre-published the final chapter of her long-awaited uh, biography of Kenneth Rexroth. So today, we're going to uh, uh, turn you on to three of the features that we have uh, in, the in the book. And then we have three mystery poets who are just going to read one poem that, that they have in here. And I, and I, I think we'll start, uh, if it's OK, with, um, I can find, with Muhammad Shahid Alam. Uh, his parents were born in Patna, India, 
but migrations took him to Dhaka, East Pakistan in 1947. Another migration took them to Karachi in 1971. And from Karachi, they, they moved following stays in Kingston and London, Ontario and Hamilton to Manhattan, to Boston in 1988, where he's been teaching economics of all things at Northeastern University. 32 years, he's been teaching there for 32 years, uh, writes on uh, economics, politics, and the global ramifications of the ongoing col colonization of Palestine. In addition, he's also been writing poetry, including translations of Ghalib, Mir, Iqbal, and Faiz. He's published in the Raritan Review, Prairie, Prairie Schooner, the Southern Review, Michigan Quarterly Review, and various other journals in the United States. He has a relatively new book out that the Grolier uh, uh, put out in, in the notice about tonight, uh, which is a translations, intimations from Galeb. Uh, welcome, Shahid. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I, I will be reading. Um, I think I'll be able to read through all, all the material that is in spoke seven. Um, I will begin by reading uh, three, three poems. Um, actually, one of them is a, is a ghazal. Um, so, Muhammad um, Iqbal, uh, whom I'm translating, he was born in 1871 in what is now Pakistan, and he, uh, and he died um, in 1938 in Lahore, which is also in Pakistan. But at that time, Pakistan, there was no Pakistan. It was uh, British uh, ruled India. See? And he is truly, um, you know, by most accounts, the greatest poet of the Urdu language in the 20th century. And also the greatest poet of Persian in the same century. See? And he wrote uh, a philosophical work uh, in English. And, um, you know, he, he he, he, he went and studied briefly uh, two or three years in, in uh, I think, Cambridge, and then uh, got a degree, a PhD in philosophy from the uh, University of Munich. So uh, let, me, let me read the first poem, which is, uh, whose title is Gabriel and Iblis. Ib what happened? Can you, can you see me? can see and hear you fine. Okay, yeah, okay. So uh, I need to give you a little um, uh, background to, uh, you know, this is a conversation between Gabriel and the same Gabriel that you have uh, in, the, in the biblical tradition. And Iblis, you might say, is the equivalent of Satan. But in, interestingly, Iblis is, is most likely derived from the Greek word diabolos or the Latin uh, Diabolos or something like that. So this is a conversation and, and the background is that in the Quranic account of man's creation, after creating Adam, God presents him to the angels and asks them to bow to Adam. All of them bow except Iblis. And so the inference is that Iblis was one of the angels uh, who refused to bow to him. And because he refused to bow to Adam, he was expelled from uh, Eden or expelled from heaven. And um, his mission, he said that, that Iblis said that his mission will be to uh, mislead mankind, see? Uh, except those who are sincerely devoted to, uh, to, to God. So uh, here's a conversation between Gabriel and Iblis and you know, the rest will become clear to you, you see. So Gabriel says, it's one, one line, dear friend, how is your time spent in banishment? Iblis answers, in fire wrapped, pain swept, surging, toiling, unbent. This line in Urdu reads as a, the most extraordinary um, uh, feel to it. See? He says, sozo, sazo, zindagi, you know, I, it goes on. So um, then Gabriel answers, at our summits, the conversation often turns to you. Should you repent, seek grace, give us the cue. Iblis answers, Gabriel, 
you cannot grasp the cosmic mystery smashing the cup has fired me i take on the deity you cannot now tempt me with celestial glory your life is dull heaven bleak your worship dreary cast out i propel the engines of creation why beg for mercy i thrive in opposition gabriel answers uh, you you lost a lofty perch with your insolence we went down a notch in god's presence and then the final re reply from iblis my malfeasance has spurned man to ambition proud he now corrupts god's creation in safety you watch the clash of opposites who joins the battle who takes the hits neither sages nor angels can now quell the fire in men brought under my spell ask god if you get time of day with him why is man dear to him not seraphim i trouble the sublime with my errant politics you chant allahu is this your only trick so that's the first uh, poem um the second poem is uh, is in a different uh, the different message altogether yeah it, and the title is god's command to angels and um, it's it's a quite a revolutionary message marshal the meek of my world arise set them free seize the towers of the rich smash their tyranny fortify the slaves with faith grant courage that rocks teach the tiny sparrow to fight the taloned hawk power belongs to the people their time has come smash the totems of tyranny their hour is done why do why do toiling peasants reap death and misery capture the gilded castles seize the granary these brokers minders fixers play for a fee i do not need clerics to parse my words for me i have no use for gilded walls and ornamented frieze make me a tabernacle with mud patch and e and leaves the age of modernity is a show of smoke and mirrors instruct the poet of the east to refurbish man's grandeur the third poem is structured like a ghazal but whereas in a ghazal you know the cup, couplet stand on their own here there is a continuity the, the ghazal has the same theme um here Ma, you know here iqbal himself is speaking to god see he says if the stars are topsy turvy is the sky yours or mine why fret about the world is the world yours or mine if heaven lacks the order of love's adventure whose fault is it god is heaven yours or mine on that first dawn of creation how dared he defy your decree is he your confidant or mine here yeah, the reference is to iblis see? on that first dawn of creation how dared he defy your decree is he your confidant or mine muhammad is yours gabriel the quran too but these melodic lines are they yours or mine this scintillating star man is the crown of creation if adam's luster fails is this loss yours or mine so um next are some rubaiyats uh, same as the rubaiyats of umar khayyam see? um and i have in translating them i have maintained their basic structure of uh, four lines with uh, three of the lines uh, rhyming see? uh what is sacred what is sacrosanct mulla and priest deal in cant cherish my shredded garment rare is madness missing our saints the, the rhyming is not exactly um, uh, what it should have been um, 
From the dark sea, rise triumphant. Renew yourself in life's discontent. No shores will ever greet you. Choose waves that are ascendant. Um, compacted in space, or am I free? Undulant wave, or am I the sea? Let him, God, let him savor his immensity. I desire certainty, define me. Let me, let me read, you know, since this is just a rubai, you know, how does it sound in Urdu? Makani hoon ke azade makahun, jaha me hoon ke khud sara jaha hoon, wo apni la makani me rahe mast, mujhe itna bata de, mein kaha hoon. Okay, so um, let me know, Kevin, if I'm running out of time, see, because I can stop at any point, you see. So, so deep was I in self-disclosure, only he was there, that means God was there, no other. What need had I to lift my eyes on the last day I caused a furor? The, according to the Quran, on the last day, we will be able to see God. But he says, what need had I to lift my eyes? And this caused a furor. Uh, hard is the ascent to intimacy with God. Harder casting it in poetry. At times, finding you is bliss. At times, I savor parting's agony. Faith is Abraham at home in fire. God immersed, faith seeks his empire. Listen, captives of modernity, your soul unhinged is a thing for hire. His soul blends all melodies. His word binds all ethnicities. Torn from the sacred, the West carves man into categories. You have breath, but no heartbeat. Your speech is stodgy, obsolete. Discard reason's roadmap. It cannot guide you to the infinite. You read but not his signs. Your flight is fixed, not sublime. In beak and claw, you are a hawk. Your eyes are not aquiline. Teach the youth my dawn grieving. Let them soar on lofty wings. My highest wish, dear God, is this. Spread about, spread abroad the songs I sing. I think, uh, yeah, there are just two more left. The blood in your arteries runs slow. Cold is your heart, you scarcely grow. The rites of piety you practice, do you also feel his glow? And the, the final one. Let me read the Urdu for this too, brief, it's brief. Tera tan ruh se na aashna hai, ajab kya aah teri na resa hai. Tane be ruh se bezaar hai haq, khudai zinda zindon ka khudai. You are alive but soulless. Your prayers are tepid, spiritless. God dwells not in surfaces, increase your inwardness. That's the end. Thanks. Terrific, Shahid Alam. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you're I welcome. Have to, I have to say, uh, the perhaps uh, these poems, although Christina Davis's look wonderful too, uh, these poems look so wonderful on the pages of the new spoke because we have both both have them in both languages. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, Karina, who does all the layout for the for the issues, 
she may it may have taken a couple of years off of her life, but uh, oh. she did, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, uh, we we exchanged a lot of emails, and she she was trying very hard to get it right. I did my I did my best, Mohammed. I did my best. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks so much, Mohammed. Yeah, thank, thank, thanks and, very much. Uh, I noticed that we've got forty four people here with us. So boy, would Carol be, Carol be in trouble if we were all in the grill here because the fire marshal would be rushing in to keep <laughs> that off and make us go home. Yeah. Our next poet is, uh, is Christina Davis. She's the author of An Ethic from Nightboat Books in 2013 and Fourth a Raven in Alice James 2006. Her poems, essays, and translations have appeared in numerous journals such as the American Poetry Review, the Boston Review, Brooklyn Rail, Jubilat, New Republic, Paris Review, and Poetry Magazine. She lives in Cambridge, and she's the curator of the Woodbury Poetry Room at Harvard University. Fanny Howe did a short introduction to the 20-plus to the, uh, page uh, feature that we have on Christina's work, and I'd like to share it with you. Christina Davis. Christina Davis is interested in language as a moral, scientific, and experimental action by humans and by poets. She has immersed herself in poetry and poetics for well over three decades. As the curator of the Woodbury Poetry Room, Christina has written profound critiques and her introductions to visiting poets at Harvard reveal the originality and depth of her explorations into poetic syntax and the ethics of speech and writing. Every time I hear her introduce a different author, I see her thoughts on poetry deepening in sync with the lines we, times we live in. And I know from her experience that she lives herself as a dissenter and an activist. I see Christina's work, especially the recent sequences in Naborn and her Walden inspired piece, Karn, as pioneering explorations of the American landscape and psyche, revealing loneliness and individual idealism as primal drives with primal effects. There is the trace of postmodern poetics in her grasp of history and science, so she seems of us, but independent. I read Naborn, some, poetry, some poems which we have here in, in the section, as personal, as bodily, as a declaration of independence, as a self-portrait sense birth, as an objective line drawing of one woman as all, sense almost as if, if creatures could speak, it is animal too. This work is wide open, beautiful and dramatic, bordering on chorus, a kind of Whitmanic magnum opus. Christina Davis. Well, holy shit, I shouldn't even speak a word after that. <laughs> Truly, that introduction is, I'm choked up. It's really one of the greatest gifts a human has ever given to me. So, so grateful for it. And so grateful to you, Kevin and Karina, for your immense uh, generosity in letting me be in this issue and your immense patience with my <laughs> relentless updates. Um, and I'm also so grateful to all the readers in this. I had a little sneak preview of this issue, so I've already learned so much from you. Um, you can't imagine how much. Um, each day, actually, I've been using little sections as inspirations to write from. So, And I'm also so grateful to all of you for coming tonight. Um, the poems I'm going to share are about nearing, neighboring, strangers, strangeness, friendship, and other formations and relations that our society doesn't always acknowledge or um, really accord the usual rights of recognition. Um, the first poem I'm going to share is called Neighborn, and that's a neighbor with an N, meaning born near. Uh, but the epigraph is by Charles Olson, who says, so born, and that's born with an E as in born away. And those are sort of the twin poles of the work. Um, Okie dokie, nay born. I did not let gradually myself be privatized. I didn't come to live in someone else's idea or let man plant the attribute of badness inside my mind or rain shame on the same places as my pleasure. I came and could not conserve myself, crawled and was stood among introductions, fell and raised myself up again. For such as I was, I was eligible. I did not come in the posture of apology. 
I am the body here for the ones buried. Out of the womb, I came. Out of the womb, you came. Out of the wombs, we came, dragging this cord. This animal, I am being human in. This nakedness from which we are not dismissed. This part of us that is fear of us. It occupies me, this errand out of narrowness, this skull healed too soon into descriptions of a ceiling. I do not think our mind should be so many descriptions of a ceiling. I did not let the names fall asleep on the named. I do not speak the sentences that sell things. On earth, where the cost of anything is, the amount of existence spent on it, where the summons of the other meets the anguish of retention. I came and testified with my body. You came and testified with your body. Bearers of the question, bearers of the question, bearers of the question of how to be free and also found. The stranger I know you to be. The stranger you know to be me. So we continue the contrary journey. I actually messed up the last stanza of it anyway. It's actually the stranger I know to be you, the stranger you know me to be, but hey, whatever. Um, Speaking of contrary journeys, as some of you might know, I have been creating and decreating this manuscript for seven years now. Um, and this destruction, this destruction is kind of oddly born of a, a generative force. So um, each poem opens up such possibilities that it's hard to close them. And there's also the humility of feeling I can't honor the multiplicity and diversity that the poems and life itself and every person I meet and every poet I bring present to me. <laughs> um, so this issue of spoke really helped me to let them go for a moment and permit them to exist in their current incarnations. And so I'm really grateful to Kevin and to Fanny for encouraging me by kindly offering to write such a beautiful and mystical introduction. So here's a poem for in honor of that. It's called No Last Dark Wood. I write the poem to put an end to the poem, how many it is. What is a world doing in such a place? Between the tongue and the teeth, what is speech, is speaking, has spoken, there is no book of only understanding. This next poem is called Amendment. Um, and the poem is dedicated to all the children who've been so senselessly and cruelly separated from their families at the US border. Something I hope will begin to end. Amendment. The love of each of us for some of us of some of us for all of us, equally valued being in this world, most evident in its failure. And what would come if it were welcome, if learning were to prepare a self with which to welcome the unfamiliar bias where a child can safely be a child is justice. Um, I'll probably read four more. Um, collected visits. I got up in the middle of the night and went back to sleep in the wrong cradle and still I was raised and did it again. And still the raising continued, the one that is never finished. Such a large family 
this trying to be while you and dream the drama of our time, which is everyone, everywhere, and care for your messages. So many words seeking to mean my mouth. Sometimes I think living is just a long dream I've been having about my neighbor. Um, so during COVID, I've spent a lot of time immersing in John Cage's writing, and I was really struck by one of his seemingly simple pieces of advice uh, for how to improve society, which is, quote, simply to spend more time with people you haven't met yet. Um, it turns out to be a harder prescription than we might think <clears throat> to a passerby. I cross the street to greet you, whoever you are. If we never speak, I'll only hear everything else. Anything to which harm might happen is alive and testifies. Dying, my father said, we were at opposite ends of the hall and had just left our separate rooms and were in the hall itself. And I thought I'd just end with two, two newer poems. Um, one is called The Intra-Body and it's after the great work of Aimé Césaire, one of my favorite poets and the philosopher Emmanuel Kochia. I give you the hands and jangling keys for this our jailbreak. I give you fingers made from the suffocation of a million fish. The prehistoric reaching of these is our index, their strandedness, our fists. I hand you death, a gift characterized by neither generosity nor gratitude. Anything that didn't die a little would take up the entire world. I give you our destiny, not anatomical, but ecological a landscape of torn walls everywhere? Or did you think you were safe from further births? And I'd like to end uh, by dedicating this last one to the great Boston poet and force for the good, Margot Lockwood, <laughs> um, who uh, is a be beloved of Groyer and uh, who is on her, I guess we would call it long journey now um, into the beyond. Uh, the poem ends in fact with six words by her that are in quotes and includes a phrase by Rosemary Waldrop, another poet I really admire. And right now it's called through that wall that hides the world from me, but might be called something else. I heard this a human from the womb. The way out, child, is the only way in. But when do we come back from all the ways? No such thing. No such thing as shelter, only endless extension into space. I passed through a number of nakednesses and through such night years here was called the several ways home. If you only knew how tender I'd stayed, how sided with the world. Existence isn't in the narrower sense and wildness and swiftness and darkness. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Christina. If all 46 of these people were making as much noise as they are in their house, in addition to the fire marshal, we'd uh, break the windows. Great stuff and uh, great last poem from uh, in, in homage to, to Margo. We're proud to have uh, published a couple of her poems in Spoke 2. One of the other features that we have in Spoke 7 uh, are translations from Ukraine. And they were guest edited by Oksana Lutsyshina and Olena Jennings. Uh, Oksana is a Ukrainian writer and translator and lecturer in Ukrainian studies at the University in Texas in Austin. She's got a PhD from the University of Georgia. Her original work includes three novels, a collection of short stories, and five collections of poetry. One of them, Persephone Blues, was issued by Aerosmith here in the Boston area in translation into the English. Her novel, Ivan and Phoebe, is forthcoming in the English translation from Deep Vellum Press. She translates from Ukrainian in collaboration with Elena Jennings. Their translation of Artem Chek's Absolute Zero was just released by Glogoslav Publishers. And Elena Jennings is the author of the poetry chapbooks Songs from an Apartment and Memory Project. Her translation from Ukrainian of Irina Shuvalova's poetry collection, Pray to the Empty Wells, in collaboration with the author, was released in 2019 by Lost Horse Press. Her translation with Oksana, oh, I, I just mentioned that one. Um, her, novel, uh, her novel, Temporary Shelter, is forthcoming from Servina Barba Press uh, here in Somerville. And she's the founder and curator of the Poets of Queens reading series. Great to have both of you folks here. You would have really busted the budget to fly you in from Texas and uh, and and Queens to, uh, to the Grolier, and then we'd you'd just be sitting in your whole hotel locked up because we wouldn't have been able to do this because of the snowstorm. So uh, thanks so much to ha for for joining us here, and looking forward to uh, having you share this with us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you, everyone who came here to uh, listen to us. So uh, the feature on Ukrainian poetry, uh, well, uh, as Elena and I wrote in our introduction, it's uh, kind of like uh, we've heard uh, quite many times that people from other countries used to say that they uh, kind of envied poets in totalitarian countries because poetry was taken very seriously there and you could actually be killed for it. Uh, so it was not a marginalized practice at all. But the, that also means that uh, poetry would revolve uh, very often around certain ideological matters. Uh, and though uh, in our, in this collection of authors we are presenting here, we tried to look at actual aesthetic and sort of, uh, we would call it epistemic um, experimentations. So uh, I'm going to read uh, a poet and then I'm going to uh, ask Elena to read another one and then we'll alternate a little bit. Uh, so the first poet that uh, we are presenting is Hrhori Chubai, uh, who is completely underground or was completely underground. He died at the beginning of 1980s, of course killed by the KGB, but killed in such a way that not, nobody could prove anything. Um, who was um, a certain legend and the spirit of the Ukrainian city of Lviv uh, and uh, who uh, became famous because people used to read poetry kind of huddled in somebody's apartment and uh, to come to such poetry readings you could not announce it. You had to, had to be word of mouth and then people couldn't just go directly to that apartment. They had to take three to four hours running around the city to lose the tail which would be some KGB guy following you. So, um, and uh, we translated a, a part of Chubai's uh, actually uh, longer poems. So, Spectacle of the World. Our powerful civilization that knows perfectly well how to play cards and dance the most contemporary dances. Our powerful civilization that sees itself as an intellectually fattened cow if it manages to tell a Picasso painting from a Rembrandt van Rijn on the first try. Our powerful civilization that is overjoyed because it has been given a vending machine that sells buttons and a magical pen that can also serve as a can opener if need be. A billion megaton hydrogen bomb a new detective series in 25 episodes, 
a moral code of the builder of communism and a fresh anecdote from speakeasy comedy club. Ah, this endlessly joyous civilization, which despite all does not forget that it is the highest manifestation of the world's progress and keeps moving. And yet it moves. And while moving, manages to visit a bar, mutter criticism to the boss under his breath, have a fight with a wife, complete two or three crossword puzzles. Do you hear? It still moves. Do you hear? Olena. Thank you. Ihor Kolonets, whose poem I will read, took part in the dissident movement in the 1970s against the Soviet regime and against the politics of Russification and was a prisoner of the Siberian labor camps. Elegy with reminisces. Wait for all birds and animals. Wait, wait for all rivers and all stones. Wait for planes, forgotten constellations, eclipses. Wait for shooting comets. And if you finish waiting, I will tell you, once upon a time, God lived in our home. In a book on some page, he fell in love with birds and with animals, was in love in the fresh and salt waters, in the clouds, in the airport sky, in all kinds of zodiacs, in the calculated eclipse and the daytime nightmares, the book that you left on the table opened right to God, forgetting about the home and about me on the road. I will be a reminder of kindness. Today I have a sign from God. He measured a pinch of words like a goldsmith though he had a vast page in the book, all the book collections and all the dictionaries, though it knows all the signs of all the stones, every piece of dust and every star, let me be a reminder of kindness. Oh God, I am a plant, help to save the breathless leaf, save the dizzy blade of grass from the flood of the sugar nets of the honeydew, of the sweet memory of remembrances and remembrances. Give me words like aphids and ants. You send milky grasses for juices, like a heartburn of the heat that sucks to a drop, the tubular straw, a starry leaf. Leave me the skeleton of dry twigs and send the name of love to the heat. All your birds and the animals, all the rivers, send all seeds, all skies filled with planes and constellations with the comets, eclipses, and omens. Thank you. So now um, the next poet I'm going to read is actually our contemporary writer, Oksana Zabushko, who's uh, our leading prose writer, philosopher, poet, distinctly feminist in her poetry and, and uh, sometimes almost prophetic in some ways. Um, and actually her book of selected poems was just published by Aerosmith publisher in, in, in Boston. So, and the launch was also on Zoom um, in the late spring, early summer. Uh, so her, the, the epigraph, Hamlet. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? Polonius. By the mass and till like a camel indeed, Hamlet. Methinks it's like a weasel, Polonius. It is backed like a weasel, Hamlet. Or like a whale, Polonius. Very like a whale. So um, it's act three, scene two. I will never learn the language of whales. Even if I would by miracle stumble upon the radio wave on which throughout the vastness of the ocean, along the whole shore, someone would transmit the signal of force majeure. Brothers, whales, at this and that hour of this and that day, according to whale time, we announce the gathering of a group for those who will throw themselves ashore. We're swimming towards a human. Farewell, copy that. I could not read the squeaking and crackling in the ether. 
even in my phone, I would not recognize the voice of the crying whale. Therefore, I have nowhere to learn about the reason for these mass suicides. There has to be a reason. To have no reason is unbecoming, indecent, provoking, like a challenge to the universe. Nobody gave the whales the right to do this unto us. Therefore, there must be a reason. Maybe this is their religious sect with a cult of sacrifice. Maybe this is their way to wage war, very clever. First ruling whales from each side duel each other in the deep waters. And then the whole conquered tribe rushes to the shore to die in agony. Or maybe they don't like our company. Maybe somewhere at some frequency in some sky, the choir of whales roars with the voices of the beetles. Stop the world, I want to get off. Ingrid Jonker swims towards them. The whales salute her with a stalactite forest of fountains. Goodbye, brothers whales. Goodbye, Ingrid, we'll see you soon. The only choral in the world for human and whale voices. In the naked skies floats a cloud that Hamlet can't compare to anything. 好的,那 Kruk is another powerful voice. In her poetry, she is an explorer of the existential depths, fearlessly descending into the core of the mountain we call a human. Teenagers. She says, in this world, there are too many of us. And in that one, probably there is such a crowd that you can't get through to acquaintances. So all your life, you hope that at least in death, you'll find happiness. But there you go. You end up at the wrong place and with the wrong people. Oh, think about whether it's worth it to die, to find oneself in an unfamiliar crowd, and for all eternity to move in the direction the crowd carries you. The one delight that every individual soul almost won't take a place, doesn't complain, doesn't make a fuss, doesn't shove neighbors with elbows, because to where should I push if everyone knows there is nothing further except for crowding and eternity. And every time when they travel by crowded city bus, so packed that it's strange, how can, move, how can we move at all? He holds her frightened hand tightly so that if something suddenly happened, they would find each other easily. Uh, so the next poet uh, I'm going to read is Katrina Haddad, um, who uh, writes quite a bit about the Donetsk and the Donbass area, but not about war, just about life there, actually, because she comes from those places. And, um, and in particular about the uh, mine, the towns uh, where the miners uh, live. And uh, she also is probably the most experimental of the contemporary ones that we are doing uh, today, at least for the Ukrainian poetry. So Katrina Haddad, keep calm and money at the savings bank. Keep calm and money at the savings bank. A huge silent ad looks at us, at does Munch's picture. Snows fell and so did blood down several floors along the circles of purification. But at the Zasadko mine in Donetsk, there was another explosion. And again, the paramedics rushed to them down several floors where the snow fell and so did blood and dust and sweat and a minor key eternally fixed on repetition. A peaceful death, just like deaths during war or others. Maybe there are less of them, how do they happen to others? And all calm, the axis of calm, is kept in the one and only jar without the right to diversification. Someone gets liters of calm. Someone gets three drops before sleep. Drop some in the nose and don't breathe for a bit so that the beat of your heart came in time to slip between the drops the way we all try to slip between the bullets and hail, and manage and don't manage to keep calm. The final poet that we'll share with you tonight is Patricia Kalina. Her pen name is Patricia Nell Warren, and she was actually not Ukrainian. 
um, unlike her colleagues who immigrated to the United States after World War II, after having spent some time in displaced persons camp, she was the wife of a poet, Yuri Ternovsky, a Ukrainian poet um, who actually lives in the United States now, with whom she translated Spanish poetry into English and learned Ukrainian. She wrote exquisite poems in Ukrainian that are now finally getting the attention they deserve. We thought that translating Kalina's Ukrainian poems into English would be a fascinating experience or a construction of a mise on the beam of the poet's life and work. The black skirt of the stream completely worn and worn in the canvas of trees. The grass is beaten like linen, like hemp. Paths are broken in. The stream on the worn stones Yellow poppies disappear as on a red fabric of an old pillow, like cork, deer horns break. Well, this thank is the, thank you. This is all from us and thank you for listening. And we are excited to have these poems published and to familiarize the American readers with our poetry. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Kevin, again, for the opportunity. Thanks so much to both of you. That was uh, that was terrific. And Karina and I have had the opportunity to read all of these. And I think everyone who takes a look at the new spoke is really, really going to learn a lot and uh, and really just get a glimpse at some some great poetry from this world. I'm now going to turn it over to my co-editor, Karina Van Berkham, who uh, is going to work. We have a, a couple mystery poets who are also in the issue, uh, and each one of them is going to read a poem. Karina. Thank you, Kevin, and um, and thanks to all those readers. Such amazing work, um, and and I love I love hearing it here. Even though I'd rather be in the shop, it's it's so so nice to hear it from uh, from you all. Um, I want to thank so many of so many poets um, in this issue uh, contributed, and 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 I love them all. And I'm I'm thrilled to um, have three reading tonight. Um, read one poem or two if you want to. Um, uh, depend if it's you know if they're short poems. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, with my buddy D. Eric Parkinson. Um, D. Eric Parkinson received his MA in English from the University of Rochester and his MFA in poetry from Boston University with me. His work has been published in the Tishman Review, Antigosh Review, Hawk and Whippoorwill, among others. His chapbook, No Arcadia, was released by Jane's Boy Press in August of 2020. Um, and we're going to put a link to that because it's wonderful. It's a great chapbook. I'm going to put a link to that in the chat. He lives in Lynn, um, Mass. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to be a mystery poet. It's like <laughs> You know, we're all staring, who is it, who is it? Dreams come true. Yeah, <laughs> um, th this reading's just been absolutely incredible. I've, I've loved this work. Um, uh, I don't know if I should read one or two. Um, this first poem is, is called My Business. What is it that the mind makes sentences? Why do I feel the way I do all day? Duck on a dock, beak tucked under a wing, warm air pushing waves that break the quiet. The error of the self that is the self. Of the tree's three trunks, only one still stands, windstorm in the era of odd weather. The duck shoves off to glide across the pond. The question reoccurs. I won't repeat the line above. The reference is enough. And why that is, a broken milkweed pod, and where attention moves, not my business. This is either the east shore of Sluice Pond or an image invented at a desk. Jets flying to Boston pass overhead. Silvery buds, the shape of candle flames, are clustered down a length of snapped off branch, an attempt that will come to nothing, end in decay a term one fights off at first. Four walls in six rooms, six rooms in one house. My pencil's rings of metal clamps are green, pinch the eraser, shine like the duck's neck. The crosswalk button never seems to work. This container has failed to hold me in. 
Um, you should probably read one more. Okay. Um, my audience demands it. <laughs> um, yeah. this, this second poem is, is called Turning. <clears throat> a sparrow glides above me in my loneliness, backgrounded by wispy white clouds, it dips and flaps before the small thing goes flinging in an excess of movement. It borrowed the startled look that bats have as they scribble their names uncoordinated over the black page starred with light. All the drafts I write are distracted in the same way, following some image sideways down the page while my intent pulses in my bones like thoughts beyond recalling sometimes too. The streaks and blots of cloud above me, empty of the bird, are disinterested. The blue behind them make me feel afraid, just like a dream can sometimes, suddenly truer than the life you lead in falling daylight on a porch at your own house, truer than your eyes in the mirror. I need something I cannot name. I feel things I don't know. Long gone bird, my bait and switch, come back to me now. I'll track you through the sunlight yet, Fleet Sparrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, and I dropped a link to his chapbook in the, in the chat. Um, thanks so much. Um, our next mystery poet is uh, Naomi Huan, um, who is a Chinese poet and BUMFA alumni. She lives in Boston with her wiener dog. Her poems have been previously published in magazines such as Burfra, which I may be pronouncing wrong, Body and Spires, and I'm thrilled to welcome Naomi. Thank you, Corinna. Um, can everyone hear me? All right. Um, I wrote this poem when I was a teaching fellow at Boston University when I was trying to teach a poem by uh, Stanley Kunitz. And I think for context, I should read Stanley Kunitz's poem first. And this poem by Stanley Kunitz is called The Portrait. My mother never forgave my father for killing himself, especially at such an awkward time and in a public park that spring when I was waiting to be born. She locked his name in her deepest cabinet and would not let him out, though I could hear him thumping. When I came down from the attic with the pastel portrait in my hand of a long-lipped stranger with a brave mustache and deep brown level eyes, she ripped it into shreds without a single word and slapped me hard. In my 64th year, I can feel my cheek still burning. And um, my poem based on my experience trying to teach, uh, trying to teach that poem is named See You Next Week. Before leaving your studio apartment, you put on a blazer. You practice your Professor Juan face again. You think of Miss Clark from Writing 30, who gave you a book of Sylvia Plath, believed that you could write, so you believed too. In class, your students and you read a poem by Stanley Kunitz. You read it out loud you read it out loud once while trying to conceal your accent like bad breath. But you mess up your vowels when you tr get worked up at the part about the thumping in the attic. You ask someone else to read it. But after an unusually long period of silence, you read it again. You ask, what does this poem do for you? Did you find it funny, tragic, jarring, or moving? Did it move you? Oh my God, did it move you at all? Do you hate me? Are you laughing at me? But nothing, not even the art major girl on the swimming team who normally helps you out in these situations. Finally, Tyler, the lanky blonde who loves Kanye West, raises his hand. I don't know, I thought the ending was pretty cringy. You finish the rest of the three hours with a petulant insistence. It is okay, you tell yourself. This is for me. After class, stepping into deep snow, you walk to the bus stop alone 
before hopping back onto Route 39 and disappearing into huddles of strangers. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. Beautiful reading. Appreciate you being here and reading. Um, is David Blair here? No? Okay, so David Blair was supposed to read next, so it seems that he is MIA. I don't know if uh, if anyone uh, else who's a contributor wants to wants to be the, the third uh, mystery reader or else we will stop at two. How about one from Gloria or uh, uh, Ruth is here, I think? I think Ruth had to go, so I think it's okay. Gloria. Gloria, put you on the spot. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Great. Let's see. So I'll read um, the crosses that's in the issue. We have broken crosses in our drawer. Why are they still there? It is a sin to throw out, throw out our symbol of Christ. We would fall from grace. The sacraments received on Sunday would be for nothing. So here they are buried by papers, screws, ink pens, pennies, a few rubber bands, how sad, Christ defending himself from junk. Where is his heart? Take the crosses out. Let him breathe. Put the pieces in every room, out in the open, each one giving testimony to your life. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for uh, letting us put you on the spot like that. <laughs> thanks. Uh, all right, so I'm going to throw it back now to, uh, to the Grolier. Um, because that is all our readers for this evening. Thank you for everyone who read the, the features and the poetry. What, what, a, what an amazing group of, of writers. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely time to, uh, do, I don't want to see Carol fold up any, any of the chairs. So everyone help us uh, fold up the chairs. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Flashback, last year, no chairs. <laughs> Hand it over to Dee Dee. Thank you, Kevin and Karina and all the poets. That was really, really special. Um, I wasn't able to be at the last launch, but my mom and um, Elizabeth and James and Celia told me how, how wonderful it was. So I'm glad to finally be able to be in on it. Um, and I can't wait to look at the physical issue. <laughs> um, uh, Kevin put the link, I think at the beginning of the chat to how you can buy it online. Um, we'll also hope to get some in the store soon. And we're not reopened yet, but we hope to reopen soon. and please stay in touch. We've, we'll keep our website updated and our mailings are still going out. So keep in touch that way. And then also, if you all don't do your shopping on bookshop.org, start doing so. Um, Groiler is an affiliate. So we have an affiliate page. You can shop for all your poetry, all your prose, all your Christmas gifts and support us at the same time. So I put that link in the chat as well. And our virtual series will continue. So look out for the next reading. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks so much, folks. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Good Thanks night. So Stay safe. Bye. 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 Bye.